Uh, welcome everyone for joining this uh, training session on SPSS. Uh, today is basically the 23rd day of this uh, training session. And uh, uh, today is 29th of April, 2024. The time is 9 to uh, 9 40 pm for this training and we have conducted so far a number of topics that i have highlighted in yellow uh, up till today we have covered uh, the correlation and regression analysis and today we are going to discuss with regression assumptions or diagnostics so uh, there are a number of uh, assumptions that we need to test in order to validate our results, whether our estimations that we have computed from regressions are uh, basically valid estimation or not. So in order to confirm uh, the validity of our regression estimate, we need to test these assumptions. So first assumption is linearity of independent variable and dependent variable, normality of residues, independence of error or residuals, absence of multicollinearity between independent variables, absence of outliers, and absence of heterostaticity. So uh, the first two assumptions uh, we will cover today and the remaining assumptions we will cover tomorrow. So let us start one by one. Uh, uh, what, what are the specific details of these assumptions and how we can understand uh, the idea behind every assumption. So let me discuss the specific detail. Uh, why we uh, need to test the regression assumptions? Checking assumption is crucial for valid regression analysis because the validity and reliability of your regression result depends upon the extent to which the underlying assumptions are met. So failing to meet these assumptions can lead to bias and inefficient parameter estimates, incorrect standard errors, and flawed statistical inferences. Here are the key reasons why checking the assumption is important in regression analysis. For example, validity of inference, uh, bias in coefficient estimates, efficiency of estimates, reliability of prediction, model interpretation, model generalization, outlier detection, avoiding multicollinearity issue, uh, credibility and ethical consideration. So these are some of the uh, reasons uh, for uh, uh, checking or for testing the regression assumption. So we have discussed in detail these reasons. So these are the brief overview of the regression assumptions. Uh, there are eight assumptions in total, but uh, through SPSS, we can only consider the first six assumptions, which are common in every type of data, whether it is cross-sectional data, time series data, panel data. Uh, but if we have a time series data, we can also consider the autocorrelation or serial correlation. And if we have a panel data, we can also consider the assumption of endogeneity. But uh, the first six assumptions, uh, are common in every type of data. Therefore, we are going to discuss the first six assumptions using SPSS. So uh, the first assumption is linearity. Uh, linearity assumption states that there should be a linear relationship between dependent and independent variable. Uh, the second assumption is normality. Uh, it states that the residue or the error should follow some normal probability distribution. The third, uh, uh, the third assumption is independence. Uh, it states that the error of one observation should be systematically related to the error of other observations. Uh, the fourth assumption is multicollinearity. Uh, this assumption states that the independent variables should not be perfectly correlated with each other. The fifth assumption is outlier. This assumption states that there should be no significant outlier in the model. The sixth assumption is homostaticity, which states that the variance of the residue should be constant across all level of the independent variables. The seventh assumption is auto or serial correlation, which states that the residue are not perfectly correlated with each other. 
in case of time series data. Then the eighth assumption, uh, assumption is indigeneity, uh, which states that one or more independent variables should not be correlated or significantly correlated with residual in case of cross-sectional panel of survey data. So these are uh, the important assumptions as I have already discussed that uh, we, we need to uh, test the first six assumption because these are the con common assumptions in each type of data. And we are going to uh, test with the first two, the linearity and normality assumption for today's session. So let us discuss the first one, the linearity between independent and dependent variable. Uh, what does it mean by linearity? This the, the relationship between the dependent variable and the independent variable are assumed to be linear. So there should be a linear relationship between independent and dependent variable. What does it mean? This means that the changes in the independent variable are associated with constant changes in the dependent variable. So when there is a constant change in the dependent variable due to independent variable, then it is considered as linearity or linear relationship. That is, there is a straight line relationship between the dependent variable and set of independent variables. So linearity means that the relationship between two variables, IV and DV, need to follow some pattern using a straight line. Uh, it may show increasing or decreasing upward or downward pattern. So there would there might be a pattern uh, in the relationship between IV and DV. So you can say uh, this this is uh, this is uh, the the form of linear relationship. In a linear relationship, the change in one variable is proportional to the change in another variable. So there should be equal proportion change in IV and DV. So the graph of the relationship is a straight line, whether it is the upward straight line, the downward straight line, and something like this. This is a weak uh, linear relationship uh, in this case. So the example may include the relationship between hours of study and exam scores, assuming a linear correlation. If uh, there is a constant increase in the study hours, there is a consistent increase uh, in exam score. So uh, the relationship might be a strong positive linear relationship, strong negative linear relationship, and weak linear relationship. So this kind of relationship is called a uh, weak linear relationship. So uh, there might be any type of them. Uh, then uh, there is a non-linear and monotonic relationship. If you see uh, a graphical presentation of the linear relationship looks like uh, this parabola shape or this curved shape, uh, this curved shape relationship is known as monotonic relationship. And this uh, relationship is known as uh, non-linear relationship. So in case of non-linear relationship, the change in one variable is not proportional to the change in another variable. The graph of this relationship is a curve and it does not follow a straight line. Example includes the relationship between the amount of fertilizer applied to plant and the resulting plant growth. Initially, adding more fertilizer may increase growth, but at some point, further increase may have dim diminishing returns. So uh, this, this is uh, the kind of relationship which is considered as non-linear relationships. Then what is the SPSS procedure of testing linearity of independent variables and dependent variables? So to assess the linearity, you can create scatter plot of the dependent variable against each independent variable. If the relationship appears linear, it supports the assumption. So SPSS procedure, apply the following procedure from the menu bar. You go to the graph, you go to the chart builder, then click OK. From the appearing box, to scatter plot, your dot plot uh, from gallery in the bottom left. Then double click the first option, scatter plot. Drag your DV into Y axis and your IV into X axis and click OK. Double click the output graph and select reference line option and then click fit line. If this option is same, it means there is a 
non-linear relationship between IV and DV. So uh, we need to check this procedure on a particular example. Let's suppose we have uh, example one data as we have uh, discussed uh, in our previous example uh, on our previous session that we have conducted uh, on Friday. Uh, I, I have shared this data uh, with my participant, which includes example one data. So let me open this data set. And meanwhile, I need to discuss with you. Uh, I may consider DV as a final term marks or total marks uh, and IV as a GPA. So I need to see whether there is a linear relationship between uh, GPA and final marks or total marks or percentage marks. So I need to open uh, my data set. Uh, meanwhile, it is open. Let us uh, uh, see what procedure we need to apply. So first of all, you go to the graph, go to the chart builder, and then before you use this dialog box in, in chart builder, uh, when this uh, option appears, you just need to click on OK. And then you will find uh, the options like this, you need to click on uh, this first option, which is basically the scatter diagram option, simple scatter diagram. Then you need to put uh, your uh, independent variable into uh, X axis and your dependent variable into Y axis and click OK. And you will find uh, a pattern like this. In order to confirm whether there is a linear relationship of uh, or not, you need to create a reference line uh, like this, and then you need to create a predicted line. If you see the predicted line, it is, it is showing the linear relationship, but it is a weak linear relationship. This, this is the predicted line, if you see. Uh, the middle one is the reference line. The reference line is the standard line, which shows that your prediction should be look like this, but uh, the predicted line shows that uh, there is a weak linear relationship. So here uh, there is a weak linear relationship in this model. So uh, let me clear this, uh, uh, clear these uh, things from my data. Data is not opened here. Let me open it again. Maybe there is some error due to which the data was not open. Let me open it again. So we will test this assumption using our own demonstrated example. Yes. Now the data is open here. So what we need to do, we need to see the impact of GPA on total marks. This is the total marks and this is the GPA. So we go to the graph, chart builder, click OK. And then we need to choose the scatter diagram from these options and click on simple scatter, like this option. After clicking on this option, we need to see what is our independent variable. It is GPA. We need to drag our independent variable into X axis. And then we need to drag our dependent variable, which is total mark in Y axis, like this. After doing this, click on OK. And it will show you the scatter diagram of uh, the relationship between GPA and total mark. Now, in order to verify whether it is uh, uh, perfect linear relationship or weak linear relationship, we need to double click on this graph. When you double click on this graph, it will show you uh, a graph like this and you will see a lot of options here. Here you can see uh, the fit line as well as you will see a reference line here. If you click on the reference line, it will show that there, uh, the, the, the reference line sh uh, shows that there might be a linear relationship look like this. 
But if you see the predicted line, this is the predicted or fit line. If you click on it, it will show the predicted relationship. So uh, the standard line shows that the linear relationship look like this, but the predicted line shows that there is a weak relationship. There is a weak linear relationship in this model. So uh, this is basically the predicted line and it is also showing uh, the, uh, the, the equation uh, variable here. So you can see here 76.51 plus 8.66 into x. So this is the equation that has been generated due to predicted line. So you can you can see R square here, 18.7% is the R square. So this line, this predicted line indicate a weak linear relationship. Uh, you can check uh, the same, the similar relationship with other variable. You go to the graph, chart builders, click OK, and try uh, the same procedure with other variables. For example, I would like to see uh, let's suppose I would like to see the first of all you need to undrag the dependent variable. For example, I would like to see uh, the relationship on of GPA on percentage for example. I take the percentage here click on OK and it will show me the graph like this. Now, yeah, now I go to uh, here double click and it will show me uh, the graph like this. Now this is the reference line. It is showing that the relationship should look like this but the predicted line if we state here it is also showing uh, a weak linear relationship. So uh, this is how you can check the linearity of the relationship. Although the relationship is linear, but this is weak linear relationship. So what if the relationship becomes non-linear? What, what are the remedies do we have if, if the relationship between IE and BV becomes not linear or uh, the relationship between IV and DV is uh, proved to be non-linear? What, what we need to do? If the linearity assumption between the IV and DV is violated in a regression analysis using SPSS, there are several potential remedies to consider. The goal is to address the non-linear relationship between the variable and improve the model fit. The first remedy that you can apply is to transform the variable. There are a lot of ways that you can use to transform the variable. For example, you can take the log of your variable you can take the square root you can take the reciprocal of the variable using the uh, uh, variable computation tool that we have already discussed the, uh, you, you you may also add the interaction term like moderating or mediating variable in order to improve the linear impact of your iv uh, on dv you can also consider some non-parametric regression techniques uh, you can you can use categorical variable uh, if there is a nonlinear relationship. You can check for data errors. You can collect more data in order to uh, increase the linearity between IV and DV. Uh, you can collect more data. You can increase your sample data. So uh, the next uh, assumption that you need to check here is the normality of residue. Uh, how to check the normality of, of residual and what does it do? It is. So recall the residual is the difference between the measured value of dependent variable and the predicted value of the dependent variable. So uh, the red line is basically the predicted value of uh, your dependent variable. And these dots are basically the measured value of your dependent variable. And the difference between these this red line and these dots, it is known as the residue. So what, what we need to do, we need to find out the residue and we need to check whether these red residues are showing the uh, normal distribution or not. 
So the residuals should be normally distributed. The assumption is more critical with smaller sample sizes. So if your if if the size of your sample is greater than thirty, uh, then it is assumed that your uh, residue of your data are normal. But if the sample size is less than thirty, then you need to verify the assumption of normality, whether it is normal or not. So in larger sample greater than 30, the central limit theorem helps to ensure that the distribution of sample means approaches normality. So why we need to test the normality of residuals? Why, why we need it? Why it is necessary? So technically, normality is necessary only for hypothesis tests to be valid. Estimation of the coefficient only requires that the errors be identically and independently distributed. Some researchers believe that linear regression requires that the outcome or dependent and independent variable be normally distributed. We need to clarify this issue. And actually, it is the residues that need to be uh, normally distributed. In fact, the residue need to be normal only for the t-test to be valid. So if your residues are not normal, it means your t-test are not valid. And in that case, you, uh, you, you cannot validate your hypothesis. So in order to validate the hypothesis, you need to test the normality of your residue. So uh, in, 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 in order to understand it more deeply, you need to understand its SPSS procedure that uh, what, what, what is the SPSS procedure of testing the normality of the residue. So SPSS provides histogram and normal probability plots of residues. You can also use statistical tests like Shapiro Wilk test. However, keep in mind that with larger sample size, the central limit theorem often mitigates the importance of normality. So in case your data is uh, greater than 30, uh, your, your sample size is larger than 30, you don't need to check the normality of the data. So uh, if your sample size is less than 30, then you need to check the normality of the data. So there are a lot of options here. Uh, the first option is the graphical method. Two common methods to check this assumption, including using the histogram with a superimposed normal curve or a normal probability plot like normal PP plot. If the plotted points are very close to a straight line uh, drawn from the lower left to the upper right of the graph, the normal probability plot supports the assumption of normality distribution of the residues. So you need to check whether uh, this bell-shaped curve is basically fairly close uh, to the uh, bars that you are seeing. And uh, your, your predicted uh, dots are basically, your observed dots are basically fairly close to your predicted lines uh, in order to confirm the normality uh, of your residues. So what is the... Uh, 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 procedure of testing the normality using histogram. So first of all, you need to run a regression analysis. Uh, you go to analyze regression, then linear, enter your dependent variable and independent variable. Then you save the residues. In the linear regression dialog box, go to the save tab, check the boxes for unstandardized and standardized residues, click continue and then click OK to run the analysis. Then you need to create a histogram, go to the graph, go to legacy dialog box, go to histogram, choose the variable that present the residues, click OK to generate the histogram and you need to assess the normally, uh, normality visually. So examine the histogram for a bell shaped curve, a roughly symmetrical and unidimensional shape suggests normality. So what we need to do, uh, let me show this procedure practically. Uh, we go to analyze. I need to close the files. So what I need to go, I need to go to analyze. 
go to regression then linear after clicking on it you need to put your dependent variable for example total marks are dependent variable and gpa is the independent variable uh, after putting uh, uh, dependent and independent variable what we need to do uh, the next thing that we need to do is to save the residual how can we save the residue uh, in the linear regression dialog box goes to save tab and check for unstandardized and standardized residue. So we go to save option. We check the from residual side because uh, here the predicted values are also unstandardized and standardized and residue unstandardized and standardized because if we see here, check the box for unstandardized and standardized residue. So what we need to do, we need to go to the residue, check for unstandardized and standardized. Then what we need to do, click continue and then click OK. All right. So click continue and then click OK. So after clicking on OK, you will see uh, in your data set you will see two columns might be generated in your data set res1 and zre1 these are basically the two the two columns which was generated using the last procedure we have done because we have uh, uh, saved the residues so it has created the uh, standardized and unstandardized residues. So if we need to see this procedure, practically, uh, we have applied this procedure and we have covered the unstandardized, standardized, then click OK and click Continue. And it will show us the data like this. And in the data set, we have seen unstandardized residues and standardized residue. So always remember that the one with ZRE, these are the standardized residues and these are the unstandardized residue. So after creating both of them, what we need to do next? Here is the complete procedure. Now we need to create the histogram. We go to the graph, we go to the legacy dialog box and then we go to the histogram. Choose the variable that represent the residues and click OK to generate the histogram. So what we need to do, we go to the graph, we go to the chart builder, click OK. And we need to consider the histogram. Click on the first simple histogram, double click on it and uh, what we need to do if we see our analysis procedure here. Histogram. We need to put the, yes. What we need to do, we need to apply the simple procedure rather than using it. Go to the graph, go to legacy dialog box and select histogram from here. This is a very simple procedure. What we need to do, we need to choose uh, either the unstandardized or standardized uh, residue. First, we choose the unstandardized residues. After choosing it, we need to click on OK. Click on OK. And it will create a graph like this. No, I cannot verify whether uh, this is normal distribution or not. I need to double click on it. And uh, here you can see uh, this distribution curve. You need to click on it. And uh, in order to see whether it is normal or not, you just need to click on it. Apply it and you will see 
a curve like this. This is approximately normal, but not completely normal. It is approximately normal, if you can see here. So it is approximately norm normal. Uh, the second thing that you can do is to, again, go to the graphs, legacy dialog box, histogram, and instead of putting the unstandardized residuals, you can also check for standardized residuals here. Click on OK. And you will see a graph like this again, double click on it. And from here, you need to put the distribution curve here. And you, you can see the distribution curve. It is approximately normal, but not completely normal because some of the bars are out of this range and some of the bars are not reaching this range. But majority of the bars under, uh, un, un, under this curve so we can say that uh, the data is approximately normal. So this is how you can check the normality of your data. So what if the graph does not indicate the normality of the data? Uh, there are some remedies I will discuss after some point in time. There is another procedure that you can apply uh, you go to the analyze descriptive statistic and explore. Uh, choose the variable representing the standardized residue and put it into the dependent list. Then click plot button, select normality plot with a test, click continue. Let's uh, apply this procedure. We go to the descriptive. We go to the analyze, go to that descriptive and go to the explore button. This is the option. Here you need to put your standardized residue on the dependent list. And after doing it, what we need to do, uh, click the plot button and select normality plot with test like click and continue. So we need to check for plot button and normality plot with test and continue click OK. Now you will see a graph like this. Basically, this is the normal QQ plot. The closer these, these dots are uh, 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 with this reference line, the normal is the data. Majority of the dots are closer to this line. Therefore, we, 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 we can uh, say that the data is approximately normal. The next thing that you can do with it, the procedure we have applied already. There is another procedure that we can apply here, but it would show us the similar results. So there is another method which is known graphical that you need to understand. How we can apply, there is a shapiro wilk test and uh, kolmogro uh, shamiro test. And uh, these tests are uh, basically used as a known graphical procedure. So how can we do it? We go to descriptive statistic explore. And uh, after that, we have used this procedure and we basically choose the histogram from here. All right, and it will indicate us test of normality. Let me see this procedure. Explore. All right. So let me apply this procedure here. We go to the same box, analyze, descriptive, explore, go to statistics. No, these are not used. Plots. We need to consider the histogram. What options do we have? We don't need to use the options. Click on OK. And after clicking on OK, you will see the test of normality. 
Now, uh, in order to consider that the data is normal or not, you need to see the SIG value of this test. If the SIG value of this test is less than 5%, it means your data is not normal. This SIG value of these both tests should be greater than 5%. So uh, we have concluded that our data is not normal here because the SIG value is less than uh, 5%. This, this value should be greater than 5%. So I have uh, indicated here, if the P value is greater than 5%, it suggests that the residual are normally distributed. So here you can see uh, the SIG value are greater than 5%. But in, but in our case, the SIG value is less than 5%. So we can conclude that data is not normal. So what if the data is not normal, what we need to do? Uh, we can uh, consider the transformation uh, as I have already discussed. We can consider the weighted least gear method, robust regression, non-parametric method, bootstrapping. Uh, we have a lot of procedure, check for influential outlier, interaction effect, evaluated method, and so on. There are a lot of procedure that we can apply. So this is how we can test the normality of assumptions. I hope you will understand both of these assumptions. Tomorrow we will discuss the independence of error and other procedure. Uh, so if you have any question, you may ask Ms. Hina and Ms. Rabia for today's discussion. No, All right, so let's meet tomorrow uh, with the remaining assumptions so that we can conclude uh, these trainings. So thank you very much for joining and stay blessed.